Yo, what is up, you guys? I'm DeAndre. I'm Javante. And this is a Dre and Jay review. And today we're going to be giving you our review of The Suicide Squad, directed by James Gunn, who also directed the Guardians of the Galaxy movies uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, uh, with that, just let you know. Uh, the first couple minutes of our review will be non-spoilers, and then we'll break down into... Non-spoilers? Huh? Yes. But it came out last week. Okay, still. All right. Non-spoilers, and then spoilers. All okay. right. Um, so, start off non-spoilers. Uh, I definitely... It, it's definitely an improvement over the last Suicide Squad movie. Um, although, you know, that's to be remained because we still don't have the full David Ayer version. But, um, you know... From what was in the theaters to what is on HBO Max, this one's definitely an improvement. Uh, I felt like a lot of characters improved uh, from this last movie. Um, Rick Flagg was one. Harley Quinn was another. Waller was the same. Um, you know, which... Um, um, what's her name? Viola Davis plays an amazing Amanda Waller. Um, the action, man. The action is really good. And I'll say, like, I love the fact that they made it R-rated. Uh, it definitely a lot allowed them to explore more, and um, Suicide Squad. It's one of those wacky, fun. It's probably one of the craziest movies I've seen in a while. Um, so I, I definitely came out very impressed by it. Um, you know, especially for DC. I mean, hey, uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, for me, I, I thought it was a good time. Um, James Gunn came out recently about a couple weeks ago and said uh, that. He thought superhero movies were getting very complacent and very much the same. Um, and you can tell he really did try to do something different with his film. It is different. Um, I don't know if I want this for every movie, of course. I think this is a nice little mix-up that we don't get often. Um, the radar and the gore and stuff like that. I thought that was all dope. And it fit with, the, it fit with this this kind of movie. You know what I mean? It's, you can do the kind of stuff. You can take those kind of chances and um, really push the envelope with this kind of film with characters who are villains and... You know, what I mean, so I enjoyed the film as well. I thought, like he said, Rick, I thought Rick Flagg had a better approach to him. I thought he was more than just a basic military guy. He had some personality to him in this film, a little more, um, you know, a little more personality to him. Harley Quinn was um, great, like she always is in the films. You know, I, mean, I never had a problem with Harley Quinn. I don't like Birds of Prey, but I have no problem with Margaret Margaret Robbie's Harley Quinn as a character. And uh, for me, I think. Um, John Cena did an amazing job as Peacemaker. Yeah. And uh, Idris Elba does his... You know, the, the cast is already... The, honestly, the cast, for the most part, was pre... Um, I mean, Idris Elba, I, I've never really seen him... Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I've never seen him yeah. do a bad Margo, job. Margot Robbie, this. Idris Elba, like, those guys, um, they don't really do bad films like that. So, I mean, for them, it's just them doing their... Well, their, no, they can do bad films, but they don't give bad performances. They don't give bad performances yeah. in their film. That's what I mean. They, ain't get, they don't give bad performances in their film. They do give good effort. And they always make a... You know, I mean, they, they make their character at least believable. And they did that in this film as well. So, I can't really complain about those characters. Yeah. Um... But, uh, you know, that's I mean, it for me for stories. I will, for, uh, yeah, for spoilers, not spoilers. But um, that's that's all you got. Sure. Um, no, I will, I will say like I do. I do think Bloodsport, and I think that's because they originally writ like you know written written him as a Deadshot. Yeah, you know? it feels like Deadshot. So and it, it, his character did feel a lot like Deadshot. It was mm -hmm. basically like just another Deadshot, but just different character. Which I mean, he's definitely an interesting character. Um, you know, for the fact why he's in Bell Rev, which, I mean, you should know by the trailer, but he put Superman in the ICU with the kryptonite bullet. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I definitely... The vibe from this movie is definitely a lot different from the last movie because the last movie was more of a serious vibe with comedic elements. This movie was more comedic with serious, like, you know, yeah. elements. Um, and I think it works because you look at the teams. Like, the last one, yeah, you looked at the roster. You had Killer Croc, you had uh, Katana, you had... Uh, Deadshot, Harley Quinn, Boomerang. So it, it, you could see like that team be more serious. But when you got niggas like Javelin Man and, and fucking Polka Dot Man and yeah, and, no, you know, like sure. you have all these all these wacky characters, you can have fun with these characters, and I, and that's what I really liked about it. Also, the Suicide Squad really lived up to its name in this one as well, uh, which we'll talk about, um, you know, in our spoiler review. Um, but yeah, you know, in I will say there's one Harley Quinn scene we'll talk about as well, um, where you're kind of just like, huh, like it's badass, but at the same time it's like, really? But no, I mean, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, besides that, I mean, I, I really had a good time watching it. I've watched it about three or four times. 
mm -hmm. uh, already. Uh, it's definitely one you can rewatch and and you know fall in love with. Um, also, gotta give a shout out to the visual effects. I thought that was amazing as well, especially yeah. with King Shark. Um, he really looked like really good. You could like see the, kind of like the lighting and everything on his skin um, looked really awesome. Uh, I thought like visually looked amazing. Performances. I also gotta give a shout out to can't pronounce her name, but it's like Daniela Melchior or Melcher. Um, she's young, like 24, Portuguese actress. This was like her first big role, and she played Rat Catcher, and she was basically like the heart of this film, in a way. So, like, because she was like the most, I mean, you, wow, well, you giving me a little bit of a look. Was, was but saying, she, yeah. she was like the kind of like the most hopeful and like optimistic. Like, she saw the good in everybody within the team, in a way. Okay. So that's why I say she's the heart. Um, but yeah, with that, man, uh, Suicide Squad for me, if I give it a grade, I would, I would, I would honestly give it an A plus. Um, nah, A plus two, A plus two high. I'd give it an A. I'd give it a solid A. It was, it was very good. Um, I enjoyed it. I uh, love the characters. Loved the, some of the comedy. I thought it was funny, and also the beginning. Um, which is really like threw me off. I, I I was on edge when I first watched it because I was like I'm not sure which character's gonna make it because you know it's the Suicide Squad, and like I said, it lives up to its name. Um, so yeah, I give it an A. Okay, I go a B plus, okay. and um, you know I enjoyed the film as well. Um, probably not the level he did. Uh, my expectations for the film was low coming into it, though. So for me, it, it did definitely exceed my expectations. That's because I, I know it was James Gunn. He's done some great works, but I'm not the biggest fan of the Guardians movie. I think they're good film. Like they're solid film, but it's not like my top tier type, like my favorite film. So, but James Gunn does an amazing job, like always. And um, I give it a B plus as well. I give it a B plus. Okay, B plus. Oh. Mm. Okay. Um, all right, so anyway, we're going to talk about spoilers. So uh, if you haven't seen The Suicide Squad, uh, be sure to watch it. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen it, we're going to talk spoilers. We'll give you a 10 second warning um, or, you know, 10 second period to get off. And be sure to come back later and watch it, our spoiler discussion. But yeah, spoiler warning starting. Okay. <sighs> All right, so this movie starts off mission. They go on a mission, and it's the people you see in the first trailer, like with the flag in the background. Background, you have Weasel, who that motherfucker, bro. As fan I, favorite, right there. yeah, as a fan favorite. As a kid, he would terrify me. Like he would, he would be something that's in my nightmares. But as an adult, like he looks goofy as fuck. He's still creepy. He's creepy, but it's like it's it's, it's in a goofy kind of way. For no, because you saw that motherfucker at the night walking. If you saw that motherfucker in the bushes at night, you'd be scared. Nah, if that motherfucker came right at you at nighttime, you'd be scared. Stop he, he looked he looks funny. I liked Weasel honestly. Um, that's probably one of my that's probably my favorite character in the whole movie. <laughs> uh, I honestly, I, I know I, I'm the person that always says like, oh, we don't need these solo films for these these whack ass characters and shit like that, like these uh side characters. We don't solo films. But I don't know if you want to see a Weasel movie. You know what I mean? I actually went back and did some research on his backstory and who he was and stuff like that. His story is completely different from what they made. He's like a basically a person has like different personalities that wears the weasel outfit around the college. He's like a college professor or something like that. So they kind of did something different with this. But I love to see a weasel uh, movie. I think that could be a great like DC horror film. Huh. Okay. Put that out in October. Him just going around killing the kids, looking for kids and stuff. Yeah, like, dope. Uh, his bad story apparently he killed twenty seven children. Yeah, so you could do a dope little story with him. I, I like to see the weasel get his own little film. I think he could be. I think he could sell tickets too. I think people go see it. Yeah. But besides that, like he said, uh, we do get a, a mission right away from the intro. Um, we see the the shots being put back into people's uh, back into the heads just to make sure they follow the orders and don't try to abandon ship. And um, we get our first look at the at the team. You got Sav uh, Savant, played by Michael Rooker, Blackguard, uh, Pete Davidson's Blackguard. You have um, TDK, which you find out is, you know, abbreviated as the Detachable Kid. Um, trying to think who else. You have Javelin Man, Mondol, Captain Boomerang, Harley Rick Quinn. Flag, and Harley Quinn, yeah. and we along with Weasel. Yeah, Weasel, the the guy. And did I say Mondol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mondo. Okay. So, yeah, you have them. They go to Corto Maltese. They land on the beach. Turns out Blackguard um, let the Corto Maltese army, 
know that they were coming and from there it's just a like complete bloodbath yeah. black guard gets shot in the face he's the first one to go and it's fucking gruesome you just see like his whole face just come on it's gruesome um mongo you know tries to take down a helicopter burns to death but while she takes down the helicopter um you know, it ends up like running into the trees, and then the fucking the blade. Yeah, the blade, the branches uh, from the tree end up piercing Captain Boomerang. Um, from that moment, I was like, "Oh my god, is he about to die?" And yeah, I was like, probably kill Boomerang. Yeah, and then as you know, helicopter crashes into him, and you know he's dead from that point. Yeah. Um, which yeah, and that does surprise me because I, I thought to myself, "Ain't no more Flash, bro." Yeah, you won't. You probably won't see him in Flash, which is disappointing. Um, Sheesh. That's rough. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I already, Wolverine, already right? have limited villains. Yeah, I know, and, and that's the problem I've I've seen with DC recently. Like they kind of find villains, like good villains, and they just kill them. Especially, I don't know what they want to do with the with the kid. Because well, like even um, Birds of Prey, I didn't like the fact that they killed Black. Well, yeah, they, they know what they, so. they want to do with their characters. Like that's why. So, but, but yeah. we see all the characters basically being killed and seeing we- the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I was gonna but, say Weasel. That shit was funny. So when they're landing on the beach, <laughs> Weasel can't swim, bro, and he just drowns. And I, that was the funniest scene for me. In the so world. I like Weasel. But I, Weasel I was, didn't give a fuck. Weasel was jumping the water. And said, <laughs> I was dying, bro. <laughs> yeah, Weasel um, drowning was funny. And then, um, Cena, Cena, just like all this, this ma- everyone's getting fucking, everyone's dying. It's a detachable kid. It's getting shot up and shit. He's died. Everybody's died. It's kind of remind me of um, uh, Watchmen. When you have the intro, when everybody's like chilling and it's like that, the music's playing, uh, and yeah. all of a sudden everyone's like died and shit. You start to see like all the stories, like how people are getting killed, mm-hmm. like all the characters. So it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. And uh, I think it kind of gives the name of Suicide Like he said, the Suicide Squad name, like, you know, Wall don't care about these people. Like, hey, go do the mission. If you die, then fuck, I gotta get the next team ready. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. And that's exactly what she does. She has yeah. the next team ready on the other side of the beach, which is Blackguard, or not Blackguard, um, Bloodsport. With Idris Elba's Bloodsport, you have Peacemaker, King Shark. Rat Keen Shark, Rat Catcher, and Polka Dot Man, and yeah. you know you find out like it goes back three days later and find out how they got sent on the mission. Yeah, um, but yeah, and <laughs> just I'll say like the chemistry between all of them was really like was great um, throughout the film, man. And um, I'm trying to think what else because I don't want to get like go like throughout the whole plot and like say. What the whole plot of the movie is. Give you a plot summary. Just some moments. Um, oh. I, I know I did mention Harley Quinn. So, Harley Quinn... Hold on, before you go there, we gotta go. Hold on, before you go there. Shout out to John Cena as Peacemaker, bro. Uh, that shit was funny as hell. I liked his character. Yeah. Eat a bag of dicks if it meant living. <laughs> eat yeah. a bag of dicks. I eat every dick on the goddamn line. Like, no, I, I like John Cena, man. I think John Cena has really came up as an act. I think... I've always said, y'all can go back and watch Fast and Furious reviews and other reviews that John Cena's been. I always liked John Cena as an actor. I thought he was, I thought, of course, he had his early, you know, struggle like everybody else. But he's gotten so much better. He's found who he is as an actor. He found what works for him. He's funny. I like him in Cop Blockers. I like him in Fast and Furious and more receivers. I like, I like him in this film. I think he's just a funny character, a funny mm-hmm. guy. And um, I'm happy to see him, him doing well in, in movies now. Um... But go ahead, you can go ahead to what you're saying. No, no, I, I like a shout to Peacemaker. Oh, yeah, no, I, I give a shout out to him, too. He's, he's amazing. And I get why he's getting the show now. Cause I'm definitely interested to see why he's getting an HBO Max show. So. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 like, I'm glad that he's getting a show, but I also, like, I want to see other shows as well. Like, I'm like, I'm kind of interested in a Bloodsport show. No. Nah. I'm interested I'm interested in a Rat Catcher or, nah. or some shit rat like catch. that. You want to see a show of that? Well, well, no, because, I mean, I'm saying I like the characters so much in a way. And also, like, I wouldn't say all of them. You can't show Rat Catcher. What you gonna do all show? Hey, I don't know. Just At least a peacemaker. He, he, he kind of does what needs to be done. Like he, he has his his values that he sticks by. He sticks by the. He's like a your boy from um, <laughs> from Bad Batch. Good soldiers follow orders. Okay. He's like that. He just gets the job done. He literally. Oh, we'll get there later on. But he literally does things just to get the job done. Make sure. He, the country is safe and he keep peace. Mm-hmm. So I would be cool seeing his show. I wonder what else he would do. In Shit, that I, want, I want to see a blood sport prequel, like. A prequel series take place and how and why he took down Superman. I want to see that. We're not getting no more Henry Cavill, so nah, fuck that. that one over. I'm leaving out hope for that. Um, no, and also I want to talk about that one scene. There, there. So there's a scene where um, they find out Rick Flag is alive. Uh, he's being held um, by these people in the island, 
<laughs> and it's just funny because you see uh, Peacemaker and Bloodsport going at it. Like on who who can oh, make the most savage? Yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. Make the, who get the most savage kills. Yeah, and it's it's just funny, man, because it, it kind of reminds me of Hobbs and Shaw whenever yeah, they're yeah, both they're walking the, into the yeah. doors and they're just looking at each other while doing it. So I, I definitely Peacemaker found definitely won. He had way better kills. Yeah, yeah, that one with the fucking uh, Tomahawk, and he, he just walked down and just yeah, bro, that shit. Man, not even that. When he when he got on top of the when he got on top and he started shooting at he got just yeah. bodying people. He was going crazy. And I don't know. Bloodsport has some good kills too. Yeah, Peacemaker stood out more, bro. Peacemaker literally then Peacemaker hit with the boom. That ain't lethal. Yeah, it blows up and shit. Like, Maybe that one person was sleeping. He, yeah, that's that's what, that's yeah, that's yeah, yeah. He wasn't playing around, man. Peacemaker was a different yeah. guy. Bloodsport was cool too, but Peacemaker was on some other shit. Yeah. That shit was funny. That, that, was, that was also one of my favorite. Look at the volume all the way down. Uh, no, that's fine. Oh, yeah. That was also one of my favorite. Hmm. What do you mean the volume all the way down? Look, that's the volume bar. It should be fine. Okay. I'm hoping. No, you're good. Just leave it. Let it play then. Fuck yeah. Cause, let it play. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Okay. Go ahead. Anyway. Um... No, that was one of my favorite lines when he was like, nobody likes to show off unless what they're showing off is dope as fuck. Yeah, no, nah, they, they had great chemistry, man. You could definitely tell. Like, they did, they came to two different places, but like, they were dope. Like, even like when they were in the, um, take you back, when they were first meeting everybody, he was first getting the team, like he decided to join the team and stuff yeah. like that. Um, their chemistry already for the jump, like, oh, okay, well, they're walking together, like, trying to get the team and stuff like that. It's pretty dope. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's funny right. because it's like the people they killed in the village turned out to be like innocent people. Like they were, you know, guerrilla soldiers. Um, um, uh, what's it called? There are people trying to overturn, overseek the government. Yeah. Know, overrule them because the government, you know, was ruled by a dictator. Uh, so they're trying to overthrow that. And, you know, it turns out. They were resistance fighters. That's the word. But yeah, and they ended up murdering all of them, which I just, you know, I'm probably going to speak out against this person a lot, a lot for this video. But I listened to Grace Randolph's uh, review, and Grace Randolph, Shout Grace Noah, Randolph. She does, she has a lot of like great videos and great uh, content, and she's very close with a lot of sources on set and, and things like that. So she's definitely a person to watch. I just watched yeah, her. She's a good. I do look good. Okay, all right. Go ahead, though. That's, that's another, story. That's that's another story for another story. fucking day. But anyway, um, you tripping. Anyway, um, right. so we had, uh, I was looking at her review, and she was talking about, like, she didn't like the movie because, like, it was full-on violence, and, like, it was too too graphic, too mature, and I'm thinking to myself, well, it was a, a rated R. They did say the movie was a hard rated R, and it's with the Suicide Squad, who's a group of villains, uh, in a way. Hmm. and vigilantes and then she didn't like the village killing scene but then she also didn't like the fact that they knocked out amanda waller at the end because they were like oh she's the boss and all that so they should have went with what the hell she's doing but i'm like amanda waller is the one who told the squad it's uh, <laughs> eliminate or terminate all the people in the village with extreme prejudice so that's why that whole scene happened with everybody like fucking shit up like yeah. you know so i don't know i just found that a point where I was like, really? Um, no, I'm not trying to call like anyone out. I just there's things that I like. Well, the Man of Wall, I think out. I think they kind of set that up very well because Man of Wall is you know we know she's ruthless. She don't give a fuck. And you see the team when he tells about when she talk about putting his daughter and our uh, blood sports daughter in fucking the prison in Louisiana, which is one of the most dangerous prisons where she probably won't even make it to 20. Uh, she's only 17, right? 16. 16. Uh, the crew, the, the, her her people, the, the work ones that work for like the the rest of the people, they're like, "Are you really gonna do that? Like, she really gonna get the kill, yeah. let the good girl go to jail?" So like, they, I think they already realized like, right then they're like, "Damn, man, like, what the hell are we working? Like, who do we work for?" And let's be honest, Amanda Waller has never been the boss of the year type. I mean, we looked at the last Suicide, Lou Suicide Squad movie, and she <laughs> fucking murdered those people in her office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Set the so can't nobody can know. Yeah, yeah. So exactly, and um, so I think they set that up really well. While the people like turn on her, so like, man, fuck this, like, we ain't gonna let you do this, these people. Yeah. So, but um, to the other point, I had I, I think there's some people gonna not like the film because of that reason because like I said earlier. This film is very much a different take on superhero type films. Like we're used to a certain um, when it comes to superhero genre, we're kind of used to a certain formula. 
that Marvel has perfected and does every time, like, pretty much does every time that, you know, DC's been, like, most superhero films have a, so a certain formula that they follow, and this film doesn't go with that, it goes with its own thing, it's its own film, you know what I mean, so, I think that's the reason why Grace Van might have had the problem with it too, because it's not very common to what we're used to for superhero films or, you know, stuff like that, so, um, I think that played a factor in that also, but I like the movie, I like that, I like the fight, I like the scene where they're shooting people up and stuff like that, because they're, they're villains, yeah. they're not good guys, they're villains, I mean, they're, 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 they're only doing the mission because they all want to get time out their sentence, or they, or Bloodsport wants to keep his daughter out of jail, like, they're villains, yeah, look at Bloodsport for his own daughter, literally just cussing her out and shit, like, telling her <laughs> you should have, you should have had somebody watching you, it's like, that she mm -hmm. doesn't like him, he doesn't like her, it's very, it's very opposite of what Will Smith had with his daughter, yeah, yeah, definitely, um, definitely. Deadshot had it with his daughter, but, um, you know, you see that character trying to grow, and he still does care about his daughter deep down. That's why he does the mission in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you can wait to what you're saying. Yeah, yeah and then know. just further along the plot, there was, um, you know, this plot point where Harley Quinn and apparently, like, the general wanted to marry Harley Quinn. And, um, yeah. You know, I his reasons, you know, he was like, uh, Harley Quinn symbolizes oppression against America or U.S. or whatever the hell. And I was just like... Just be honest, dude. She was hot, and you, <laughs> she was hot, and she was your damn kidnap, kidnap Eve, bro. Like, don't, don't. See, it wasn't that damn yeah. serious. Like, you could have found any. There was literally anybody else you could have married. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I just felt. I just felt like that was a weak point in wanting to marry her. But it it was funny in a way because you know you saw Harley Quinn end up like murdering him right after. Um, and it kind of just shows how crazy and chaotic Harley Quinn really is, um, in a way. And that to Grace Randolph, because, you know, she said something about, like, oh, like, I didn't like the whole po point of Harley Quinn, um, fucking her kidnapper or whatever, because it kind of symbolizes, like, it, she said something like it relates to rape or something like that. I need to watch the video again, but I'll, like, be sure to watch it. But I don't know, like... I feel like that's a bit of a reach because first off, Harley Quinn was the one that initiated it. Yeah, by saying oh, "Gosh, sure. you're hot," and started making out with him. Yeah. Um. So, I'll just leave it at that. And also, Harley Quinn is known to be Sex sexual. sexual. Yes, like it's. I, I feel like it's different than Black Widow, where like, okay, Black Widow they sexualize her a lot in Marvel. Harley Quinn. I don't have a problem with her being necessarily sexualized because she's always been that way. Yeah, you know, um, comic book cartoons. She always has been like exactly like she like she shit. She there was a uh, what was, I think it was the Batman and Harley Quinn movie where she had Nightwing tied up on the bed and fucked him. There was Batman Assault on Arkham where Nightwing so that was rape right there basically to have him tied up. Um, Batman Assault on Arkham fucked Deadshot night before the mission so. Harley Quinn's known to be sexual. I I I don't understand when people be like, "Oh, she's too sexualized." Or yeah, that's who she needs to be like, is. yeah, that's just who she is. Um, I also had a problem with her saying, "I, I draw the line like at killing kids," because I was like, "Weren't you there when uh, Joker killed Jason Todd?" Robin? Technically, she's yeah. Technically, she's I mean, supposed to be yeah. So technically, this whole I'm against killing kids. You know, I'm, I'm not sure how how that's supposed to. You know, that kind of conflicts. Maybe she was never with the whole J jo Joker killing uh, Todd, but she I mean, jo yeah. I mean, she was never with him, but she had to do it because Joker was abusive and stuff like that. Maybe. Very true. Oh, I don't but know. But I mean, she stayed with him after, so. He was abusive. Yeah, I guess. That's a... that's a. It could be that. Yeah, I, could I don't be. know. That could be the story they went with. I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't go into detail about that. But, um... As far as the scene with Harley Quinn, I didn't, I didn't mind her. Uh, I thought, it was, I thought it kind of made her character who she. Uh, it kind of expressed like you said, chaos and stuff like that. Like I think Harley Quinn has got to the point since the, all the damage that Joker did to her, she has to live in chaos. She can't have a normal life. Like even if she liked that dude and was liking what he said, because she seemed like she was actually kind of interested in what he was saying. He actually seemed like he was genuine about what he was saying. Oh yeah, yeah. But she had to kill him because she's like this shit ain't gonna work. I, I need chaos. I need shit to be hectic. So. um... I completely agree with what you're saying about that, and I had no problem with that scene either. Yeah. Same here. Um, and then just moving on, you know, we get further along. The oh, way. we get um, we get a little look at our our antagonist, our villain, yeah. um, Starro the Conqueror. Yeah, who is uh basically from outer space, and which the government, uh, the United States government, has found and um tried to keep control of and try to study, and it turned out um he's able to take 
he was able to use this, uh, have like many miniature versions of himself mm-hmm. and attach to the humans and to take control. take control and gain their conscience, which also made him bigger. So that was an interesting story. I thought the villain was pretty interesting, eerie, yeah. kind of icky, but yeah. it was it was. I thought he was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely it was. Um, I, I know a lot of people actually were uh, questioning, like, okay, well, when they saw him fucking shit up in Portal Maltese, why wasn't the Justice League uh, called? And why weren't they called? It's because they're in a dispute with Warner Brothers right now, <laughs> settling their contract <laughs> dispute. Um, so that's why they they weren't called in this movie. Um, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I guess. Maybe it's because the country of Puerto Maltese, like, it's yeah, more wanna, yeah. strict and they have, like, this no lead policy. Or I don't yeah, know, probably want no Americans in there. Yeah, so maybe so that's, that's probably it. why. But, and, um, and, I mean, shit, the fact that Star can take, take control of people, do you really want that nigga to take control of Superman? That's true. Very true. Yeah. But he can always burn them off, to, like, before they come. Okay, fine. Wonder <laughs> Woman? She hit that sword. She goes. <laughs> Okay. Like Deadshot that we're doing. Okay, Flash, Green Lantern. He's too one. fast. Okay, either way. Green Lantern could put a shield over his face. Like, he probably, like, he probably like, look like a, like a face shield over himself. Okay, fine, Batman. He ain't got no defense. Batman probably just put like, one of those metal, like his metal armor or something like that, or metal or something on his face. Okay. Yeah, I got just, You're just going to say because he's Batman. And, 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 and before you go there, uh, Martian Manhunt could just turn into... Uh, yeah, know. he could yeah, just, you know, phase himself yeah. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, also, I, I we got a long way to build. And one character I was interested in and learning more about after seeing the trailers and seeing, like, you didn't really see much about him, but like, I was kind of curious to see more about him was... Uh, <laughs> Polka Dot Man. Yes, I actually like I, the actor that plays Polka Dot Man. I think he's a great actor. I think he's. I think he's been great since uh, Batman. Return, Batman: uh, The Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. I think he. I think he was cool back then. But then he's done like the Baba Yaga with uh, Ant Man and yeah. stuff like that. But he's always dope when he's in films, especially in James Gunn's movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Polka Dot Man was an interesting character, man. Like I, I actually were, was very curious to learn more about him. So going to this movie, you get early uh, glimpses of him, and you're like, okay, I wonder what his powers is going to be. And then you see him in the forest. And like he's like like polka dots like growing his skin. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Like, what the fuck is that? And he has to like, and like at one point, at first I didn't catch it, but I had to go back and watch it. He's like, he's all like swollen up. Oh, you didn't see it the first time? I didn't see it. I was, well, I was watching with um, Jennifer, so I didn't see like the I didn't see him all swollen up and stuff like that the oh. first time. I, but I saw him go to the back and like, boom, like blow it all up. And yeah, like, like he was he was throwing. I think he was throwing up. And then that's like all that shit was flying out. Which oh, really? Are, which are, I mean, it looks cool because I mean, yeah, it looks, it looks, it looks like pretty interesting. And all that color. Yeah, it looks pretty interesting. Colorful. Okay, so yeah, and then he goes on the mission. And he sees his mom all the time. And that's like yes, because apparently his mom was a scientist at Star like, Labs, and she has studied on him, him and his brother and brothers and stuff like that. Yeah, and um, you know, I, I've actually um, saw like people like talking about like some theories, and they were like, "What if?" Like some of the wacky villains in DC are like the one his brothers and sisters. Like, what if in the future movie Condiment King is one of his brothers? Yeah, and I was like, that could actually work. Like, I could see uh, that actually makes some more sense having a whole family of wack of you know superheroes or supervillains with wacky fucking powers rather than all these villains just coming out and being like, yeah, I have this power. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure, yeah. man. When they had that moment where he's like talking to the team, they're trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Like, that shit contagious. That's just funny. that's just funny. <laughs> but um, he like, has this moment where he's able to express himself and show like okay why he is the way he is and seeing his power set when he's in the damn what's it called he starts shooting him up yeah like, those do damage like he ain't fuck those just do damage they just do mm-hmm. damn joke and, and I think that's one, one thing I really liked about um, a lot of the villains in this movie they all had their time to shine and they all had their little backstory at times well, well that and also like how literal their names were like oh yeah you know you think. Oh, okay, this man's name is Javelin Man. Okay, this might be a Javelin that, you know, turns to fire or whatever. No, like, you know, whatever. Javelin. Nope, it's just a guy who throws a Javelin. Polka Dot Man? Nope, it's just a guy who throws po- <laughs> who th- shoots polka dots at people. Yeah. So that's really what you got from it. And that, that's that's what I loved about it. It was so, um, you know, basic, just basic to yeah. the point. Yeah, that and, um, yeah, man, that's one thing that James Gunn did better than the first one. I don't know about the David Ayer cut because we haven't seen that as it came out. We might not never see it. But the characters in this film are very much fleshed out. Every character has a moment to shine. Like I said earlier, every character has a backstory you get a little bit about to know about. And they all have heartfelt moments. Like he said, Ratcatcher might be like the one that has like the most like heart and trying to like get her, see the good in everybody, which is cool. I agree with that with King Shark and mm-hmm. Bloodsport and everybody. But every character has their moment to show why they're here and what made them kind of become who they are. And I, I like that. I thought that was dope because that's one problem I have with the first ones that besides Deadshot, Will Smith, and Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn, you don't get much character backstory for Krill Croc, Boomerang, 
Uh, Katana gets a little bit with her story. Uh, you get a little bit of her, and that's about it. Yeah. You know, we seen other rest of the team get no story. So I, I, I'm glad they went back. I'm glad in James Gunn's version, in his movie, he actually put time in for every character to be developed and have a moment for them to show off why they're in the team. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I like that. I, I definitely agree. Um, I also give a little credit to David Ayer's uh, Suicide Squad because. You know, like, I, I know there's people who want to forget that movie as, as much as possible, but you also have to kind of, you know, at least as, accept it because when you watch this movie, that's how you're able to jump into it so fast. Like, you know, with the mission right from the beginning. Like, yeah, yeah, time, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to explain, oh, this is Task Force S, this is the Suicide Squad, this is why we need it. Yeah. Nah, it, it, like, that was complete. That was, you know, enforced in uh, David Ayer's version. So you, in this movie, it jumps right from the start. Yeah, With them sure. on a mission. And I really like that. Yeah, for sure, that. for sure. You're right from the jump, you're getting right into the action. Uh, music soundtrack was nice. Uh, the music choices. Yeah. I thought they yeah. were dope. I thought they did a good job. Um, you know, it had some, it had, it did its, a uh, big question I think is, did this film have a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy vibes? I thought there was moments of that. I also thought it had its own little thing. It did its own thing. I was like separate from like what Marvel does. So I was excited to see that. I think James Gunn. This is. I'm glad James Gunn got to finally put out his own project that doesn't have to connect to anything. Or because with Marvel, when James Gunn does his movies, he can be free, but he also has to make sure like, hey, you gotta stay in line with the future of this or what's coming next. Or you gotta like stay on a timeline. With this, he was able to really just go all out and do whatever he want because there's really no connection for anything else coming like. To that came or coming now like so mm-hmm. i think that's pretty dope that james got the opportunity to do that so. yeah definitely agree um i gotta move, talk about this one scene now this is a scene that i thought was cool like it looked cool visually the action was great but at the same time i was like okay this is this is a little too much and this was harley quinn's escape scene you know she's captured um, I thought it was cool from the start when she was hanged up and, you know, oh. ch- ended up choking the guy and um, using their keys dangling. It kind of brings back Suicide Squad. Remember when she was yeah, in the yeah, yeah, cell yeah. and all uh, on the ropes and shit? And I think, apparently, there's a um, a rumor that Mar- Margot Robbie actually performed that stunt on oh, her cool. own by doing the key and shit. Nice. If she did, amazing job by her. Yeah. Um, but no, and then, you know, she ends up escaping through that whole building with... Porto Maltese military and armed guards with guns, and she's able to work all of them. And we saw this in Birds of Prey when she walked into a police station, and you know ended up in the she the the thing with Birds of Prey is the fact that you know she had um a gun that was non lethal rubber mm. bullets you know yeah. the colorful rubber bullets that's what she had in Birds of Prey. This one, okay, she has machine guns. I can understand. And she also is killing them. Birds of Prey, you know, she was just yeah, knocking them niggas out. For sure. This one, she's killing them. But I just felt like this is too much for, for like, some people, like, some other DC characters to even get out of. You know? Yeah. Um, I understand that. I, I guess I looked at it from, like, the element of surprise. Like, some of those guys weren't even knowing that she was around, so she was able to blast them without them even seeing her. Um, without them knowing that she was like free, you know what I mean? Nobody really had, they like had the alarms going off saying like, yeah, we have an escape prisoner. But there were some, there were some guys I saw on the scene, they had guns and they were just charging at her when they had guns in their hand. I'm like, why? Yeah, that's true too. No, I agree. Harley Quinn got a little bit, you know. Yeah. And and, and that's the thing. I think Harley Quinn just has that plot armor where, you know, you just know she ain't going to die. And I, and I, I think that's what they gave, like, that's what they gave James Gunn. And I think that's what James Gunn, um said when he originally got this movie they said they gave him so much freedom where he was like okay i can kill off these people if i want to not harley, this yeah harley quinn was the one exception you cannot kill off harley quinn exactly um but you, you know and the problem i had with it is because you know they struggle dealing with harley quinn but throughout the beach scene in the beginning they wasted the whole entire suicide squad you know so yeah. i think just showing that it kind of contradicts and it makes all those deaths like me. It's like, wow, they okay. These guys weren't really. Sh- these guys weren't shit. I mean, they weren't shit. Don't get me wrong. They were. They were out of the Suicide Squad. Uh, you know, uh, pick of the litter. They weren't the best. Yeah, no, for sure. But still, I mean, there's certain characters that just they are like part. Margaret Robbie sells a lot of merch. Yeah, she she's got, one, she, of, she she's one of your highest selling characters as far as merchandise and. People go to see Margaret Robbie and Harley yeah. Quinn. Like that's a big time character. So she, she has plot armor. That's how. That's all it is. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of characters like that though. Batman has the same shit. Batman does things all the time, and it's because he's Batman. Like we just accept it because it's Batman. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? You talk about all the time how we are like cartoon, how everybody's getting fucked up by uh, Dark Side's, uh, his memory created them, like the ones that are mutated. Wait, he's about them Parademons. The, the Paradooms days. The Paradooms days. And Batman don't get fucked. Everyone's getting limbs tore off and killed. And Batman's out here just dead. He's straight. Because he's, he's Batman. Yeah. This is how it works. Certain characters get that treatment. Yeah. Um, so I have a real problem with that. I kind of just come to expect that with um, these these films. Uh, another thing, though, uh, to go back a little bit. The, the bar scene, I really enjoyed the bar scene. Yeah. Did you know it was, uh, Mantis was the lead and shit? When they, when they had the dance, the dancers on stage? Really? Yeah, that was Mantis in the middle. Hmm. Yeah. Go back and right. I go back and watch it, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. But it reminded me kind of what they did with the first one, like when they went to the empty bar, and they all, like, sitting there having, like, the conversation and shit like that. Yeah. But this kind was more... like a team moment. Yeah, but this actually felt more like a team moment. Um... We get to see all the characters out of their elements a little bit and doing some different stuff. Like, even the rat. The rat's like, hey, give my man, give my man a drink, yeah. too. The rat got a little drink. But you see, um, it was some of Bloodsport, because he already has a relationship that Rick, with Rick Flagg. They have, like, a real good relationship already that kind of, like, brought him into this in the first place. Mm-hmm. So, you see them really rekindling and talking and speaking. It's like that drinking, chilling. You see Polka Dot Man dancing on his mama. Like, yeah. <laughs> dancing on his mamas, like, multiple, like, five, six mamas. Uh, and he enjoyed himself. He chilling. Yeah. And um, Ratcatcher's is dancing also, so I think it's just a moment where everybody's like out of their element doing something different that they don't usually do. And I think it's cool for us to have that moment to be able to take away where we can step out and just look at these characters as just people and just like see them outside doing things that are just like um, different than what they're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. So I always like, I always like, feel like in moments like that with film, especially like in superhero movies where you see a character like outside their element doing something different. Yeah. So. Uh, and, that, uh, and that's another thing. I like, I love. The fact that, you know, you had all these characters who had bad story. They told it to the team. They had, um, you know, Ratcatcher. She was telling her past about her father and all that. I don't know. In the Suicide Squad, I just felt like the characters... Like, I could believe the characters in this movie actually being friends at the end and, you know, actually yeah, caring about felt, one yeah. another. It felt genuine. The last movie... You know, you have a nigga like El Diablo saying, oh, I'm not going to, I lost one family, I'm not going to lose another. I'm like, nigga, you just met these niggas. You now start helping them. And you just now started help these motherfuckers, bro. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I feel agree. I felt, I felt this one had a very, uh, they, did a, they did a way better job of just like making it a team. Yeah. The first one just feels like, okay, we got Will Smith and we got Mar- Margot Robbie and we're going to put some side pieces around them. We're going to make this work. This is way more of like a, like, Continuous like uh, conjuring of like team. Nobody's bigger than the team. Everybody's on the same ground. Like yo, you kind of like honestly, like everybody's useful. Everybody, everybody's everybody useful. Has a purpose. Like, I, like even though Idris Elba's probably the biggest name actor, you know what I mean? Like, him and John Cena are probably the biggest names. Mm-hmm. They don't really outshine anybody. They they they're, they're, they have their moments like you're like oh I like those characters, but like they don't really like, take over like where it's like oh, okay Idris Elba is dominating the scene yeah. or dominating the, the movie. Or you need you need this person. Yeah, I need them to dominate the movie. Like Will Smith kind of had to do. Mm-hmm. It is everybody that will have their moment. And it just flows perfect. Like, he just falls in line with everybody else, and that's an amazing thing to do, man. Yeah. I like that. Even like, Milton was useful. Yeah. <laughs> and you hear about the rat thing, like it's up having the rat fear, the phobia of the rats, and stuff. Yeah. Like and then they actually go into the backstory about like he tells why. It's not just like a simple, like, in the first two, so they always said, oh, he has a rat phobia, and then we would move on. We never know nothing else. But in this movie, they actually explain, like, okay, I have the rat phobia because my dad used to put me in a fucking locker, and there was rats in there, or something like that. Yeah. And I, that, I was like, okay, even though it's like a small little thing, it's not a major, it's not a big scene, it's just like a small scene on the bus driving. It's a small little scene, and it's small dialogue, light dialogue, but like, when you hear that, you're like, okay, now nah, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's sometimes small things can really help the bigger picture. Yeah. So I like that also, I, I, I say. Definitely agree. And um, interesting side note, I actually used to have a pet rat as a kid. He did. I did, yeah. So I definitely fucked with Rat Catcher and, and Sebastian, you know. I, I was, I'm, I'm not creeped out by rats. You know, I've always thought they kind of have a, had a bit of a cuteness to them. That many rats, yes, I'll be that, Yeah, with that many, maybe I might freak out a little bit. But and how they were tearing up old boy, a starfish, bro? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, also, um, what do you think about... Like Harley Quinn having that having that hero having that moment, she gets to kill. I didn't mind it. I thought it was actually dope. Me either. Yeah. Cause Ratcatcher played a big part in that too. Cause yeah. Ratcatcher, there is no doubt. And it's like it's just this gets down. <laughs> he's all freaked out. So he just gets down. You have Ratcatcher holding him like. Yeah, man. Yeah. And 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 honestly, the villain Star. What's it called? Star Star Star. Star. Yeah. Was very dope. Like he actually was powerful. Like you felt it because like when he started. Um. When he first off, when you see 
the brain, the science of all those things in his head, and he's like talking about like, oh, what they been experimenting. He find they find like the U.S. has been a part of this, and, and helping that's the out. whole reason why they had the mission in the first place was to, to destroy you know, all the evidence, exactly, get rid of all that shit. And you see, um, you see the tables turn with character. You start seeing what characters are really how characters, uh, characters. You start seeing the difference in the characters. Like Rick Flagg, you see that even though he's a military man, he said this is fucked up. And it's got to be exposed. Mm-hmm. So and he's a military guy. So you see that, you're like, oh, damn. And you see Peacemaker saying, I can't let you fucking do that shit because we yeah. got to keep the peace. You show that shit, there's no fucking peace. <laughs> so you have those two characters that are going at it just like on different... Um, who you, because probably, I kind of would think that Rick Flagg would technically be like, since he's a military guy, he'd be like, okay, hey, I understand why we got to do this. Yeah. But he has his own approach. And I like seeing that fight scene. He had some dope uh, visuals in that fight scene. Yeah, I, did, I liked it too. Some of the visuals are dope. Uh, and the other day did, we did, did it uh, surprise you? Yeah, man. Rick Flight had him though. Rick Flight got a little complacent. He had him at the most for yeah. most of that fight. And Rick Flight dying was like, damn, man. Because Ratcatcher and Rick Flight had grown like a nice relationship. And seeing her seeing that, um, she was like, damn, I can't believe like Whip will be like a team. And she's like the one that's all about the team building and so, like team bonding and stuff yeah. like that. So to see that, she's like, oh fuck. I don't know. I, I just I think Rick Flight is one of those characters where. With the Suicide Squad, and I, I like I could see him dying because I don't really see him like oh he has to lead him in every movie or no or no especially that blood sport now yeah so. but, but yeah I did I, I did surprise me when he when he uh, when Peacemaker killed him I was like yeah Damn. but it made sense though because think about it if you had Rick Flag and Bloodsport somebody got to take the back seat oh yeah, yeah and you already made it sound like Bloodsport gonna be your he's your guy he's your he's your leader yeah and Rick Flag is supposed to be the last team so yeah. like Rick Flag has to kind of go and Waller even told uh, Bloodsport I'm gonna make you a leader. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and he actually becomes a leader. So that's dope. But like seeing that was dope, and also even seeing more of the backstory, of like the the star thing, like how because no, I know a lot of people thought I thought like, oh, why don't you rip the motherfuckers off? Yeah. They tried to do that <laughs> shit. The motherfucker's face was like pretty much gone. Oh, All the skin, God. everything was gone. I was like, oh my gosh, it was graphic. It was it was low key scary. Look at that shit. You saw motherfuckers all fucked. I'm like, oh fuck. And when that thing breaks out and it starts throwing those, like, bring up those little star things and they all kind of get on people's faces and shit. It was funny in a way because you see all, like, the, you know, the Porto Masi's government, they're over here shooting at that shit. And you just see Polka Dot Man just smacking the motherfuckers <laughs> in the air. I'm just like, bro, come on. <laughs> like, what? But Bloodsport, yeah, that nigga, he, them motherfuckers wasn't touching his face. Yeah, he could have put his mask on. I, I, and I, lo- I loved blood sports i like the costumes in this film i actually thought they yeah. were really good blood sport you know he's basically a walking weapon like anything from his suit can turn into a weapon yeah and i thought that was really cool and his mask was cool too yeah yeah i, I just called the costumes were very unique i thought they were very colorful rich flag wearing some yellow just chilling like i thought yeah. that was dope i thought i thought the costumes actually looked very very much very well with the cat like it looked something like it would be straight out of a comic book yeah for sure so. no, i agree and um interesting thing we haven't talked about we haven't talked about king shark a lot yeah, I, I like King it. Shark though. I, no, I guess King Shark. So that's just a I thought it'd be a lot funnier. Though. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it'd be a little bit funnier. But I like King Shark as a character. Um, I think he was a. I thought Killer Croc could have been what King Shark was. Like they could have done Killer Croc something like that. Mm. Um, but seeing King Shark do what King seeing King Shark was dope. You know, being like the, 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 the he's the muscle. He's the muscle. Yeah, he's the muscle of the team. Seeing him eat people was like, oh fuck. And uh, and he the, split that one guy. Yeah, it was crazy. But then yeah. seeing him, seeing him with the the guppy things, and you're like, he's all like friends. He's like jumping around them, mm-hmm. and they all escape, and they all like around him. It's like that, and they start fucking him up. I'm not gonna lie, when I, I thought saw, he was gonna die. Yeah, when I saw all that blood. I was like, oh my god, he's about to die. I thought they gonna kill this man because this dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> they about to kill. I thought they might kill King Shark. Yeah, once he fell on the ground, I was like, oh, okay, he's living. He's he, and when they started shooting at his ass, I was like, oh, he's about to fuck these niggas up. Oh yeah, he got mad as fuck. I thought he was gonna. I thought he was gonna fuck every. I thought he took out the, the the main guy, the the captain. Oh no, 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 no. But now he got mad. You see how before saying he came at. To start taking it. I was like, oh, fuck. But King Shark was dope in this film. I think uh, definitely he's like the muscle. He's the one, like, you, he's the one that stands out the most because he's a shark out of water. Um, but, you know, he does what he's supposed to do. Like, he doesn't really speak too much. Yeah. But he's cool. I, I and he has some funny moments like him reading the book backwards and shit. Like, trying to read and shit. It was mm-hmm. funny. But King Shark was cool. I'm not going to lie. That, that scene where... Um... <laughs> where he becomes friends with Ratcatcher and he starts shaking her hand when they showed that I thought he was going to grab her ear yeah I thought he was either going to yank her fucking arm or ear because yeah, that's what it just yeah, no, like, the yeah. camera angle just yeah. seemed like it was too good to be true yeah yeah and John Cena was like you're so dumb and I thought it was like, he's going to grab her just her, and that was because there's nothing about this film like James Gunn with this film like it started off with the stakes being like anybody can die besides, yeah, exactly. besides Harley Quinn of course but anybody can die so you didn't really know when these characters were going to die I felt more characters were we're gonna die because you didn't just didn't know, and also this character's like 
Nobody's pulling make please care no sequel or anything like that. So he's like one off characters possibly. So yeah. you kill any of them. And see my man Polka Dot Man go out. Like, oh yeah, I knew he, man. once they showed that angle. Of yeah, he said I'm a hero. I, I knew was going. They up. fucked him up, man. Even the after effects, you see all of the smush of his body. Yeah, he's like, oh, damn, oh, bro. God. But Polka Dot Man got fucked up. I'm glad King Shark and them. I thought King Shark was done. But also another thing that's cool this film is the transitions. Yeah, yeah, I actually like that too. Yeah. Like the way like the he, titles, the title, how he put like three weeks later, or three days later, something like that, and also how he makes it work. Like because there's scenes like when peacemakers go out the rat catcher to get the the disc back for with all the footage of the U.S. you know um, secrets. Yeah, see your secrets. It like shows him like right next to her and stuff like that. And then it takes you over to the other side where all the rest of them are. Mm-hmm. You're like, what the hell's going on? And it shows like 13 minutes before or something mm-hmm. like that. And it shows you how like, they get to the point that they're at where they're blowing shit up and all that kind of shit. And I thought that was a dope transition because then I see when I saw a uh, blood sport by the fall and he like landed yeah. and he starts going down like oh this my first gonna die bro but he starts landing on all the different platforms and um, surprised he didn't break his fucking knees low key but well, he had his shit bent so yeah. it wasn't like Captain America <laughs> with Thor Thor came out that hammer and gets Captain America he didn't break his yeah. shit so um but uh, seeing that scene then seeing that little square off between. Peacemaker and Bloodsport, two characters that have been kind of going at it, but not like in a mean, like I'm like I hate each other way, just like a competitive way. Like okay, mm-hmm. I'm the better shooter, I'm the better killer. So seeing them have that one moment together, and they both put the gun and shoot the bullet at the same time, you don't know where it's going. I'm like, oh, I don't know who's gonna fucking make it and die. I, I kind of think Peacemaker gonna go. Come like okay, but seeing the bullets break, see that one bullet break, like oh, he broke his bullet and he right through the neck, like oh fuck. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was dope scene. I thought a lot of the characters dynamic was dope. And seeing and I didn't want those characters I could see it. Even when Peacemaker was like killed with Flash, I still didn't think him as a bad guy. I was like, damn, man, that sucks. But I like Peacemaker. I really cause I like him yeah. like the whole film. So I grew up I grew on the on the film. I grew with him. I like him. He's just a guy like he said, I mean he's he just, wants he's peace. A guy, he wants peace, he seats the mission thoroughly. So Yeah. You know, that, this that soldiers was... follow order. <laughs> yeah. So uh yeah, but um, we see he ends up surviving though, so like yeah, at the end, which I mean that. So basically, we know the Peacemaker show is going to take place after, yeah, um, pretty much, pretty much. I mean, it, maybe they still do it as a prequel, but I'm pretty sure it takes place after. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, Suicide Squad. I really enjoyed it. I think it's definitely a film you should definitely thing. watch. What's I got to say? The end scene when Waller gets by the way to kill them all. And then she gets knocked out. Oh, boy. She was cussing the world. Oh, she was going fuck off. I was like, fun. damn, Viola Davis, I ain't never seen her. Uh, she is. She goes crazy. Damn much. Nah, I never seen her swear. Much. I see her go crazy when in Fences, she gets mad, upset too. Oh, she gets yeah. some voice high. Um, no, uh, seeing the characters all turn around, though, it felt more, I believed it more in the first movie where you had Will Smith, who I could tell why he wanted to go do it, but the rest of the cast, Boomerang, all coming back to help him do the mission, it didn't really fit because everybody's like, okay, well, why the point? What's the point of all the rest of y'all coming back? Like, there's no point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, with this team, you felt like, okay, it's a family, it's a team. If one goes, we're all going to go, which I really appreciate. I really enjoyed. I thought that was like a small thing that really. Um, Help with the film also, and I've seen the first film was back. I never seen David Ayer's version. I don't think we ever will. I don't think we should at this point. I think this film. I think this film is. You know, we have to. I mean, I, I, I think it. now it's one of those. Well, if they want to, I don't think they should. I don't think I they would, will, but they should. I wouldn't there. mind seeing it, but we. What I'm saying now is, you know, it's kind of different from Zack Snyder's Justice League versus I Josh saw, Whedon because you know we didn't really move on. The, the DC didn't move on after that, you know? Like, we we don't even know where the DC is, really. Like, I know we had Aquaman after take place after that. We had Shazam, but as far as the plot and everything that was going on um, with those characters, you know? Yeah. They, they were still, like, you could, you could watch Justice, Josh Whedon's Justice League, and those characters still are the same. Like, that, like, you could watch Aquaman right after Josh Whedon's, and it still is okay. You could watch Aquaman after Zack Snyder's, and it's still okay. Yeah, I, I um, feel with David, you only need David Ayers because now you already have this movie in. I mean, you're going to basically go back and say, okay, I got this for what reason. I mean, like, Harley Quinn was dope in this one. Yeah. So, I mean, you only care about Boomerang. And well, Will Smith pretty much like oh, those other Yeah, characters. and I've, I've always been a person that I thought that there was some tampering with the original Suicide Squad because, you know, I remember I saw that first trailer and, you know, with the whole dark fucking yeah. dark trailer. It was very dark. Um and I I I, I just really like that approach and then you saw with every other trailer it was basically like they were trying to do a, mu- a music video. Like they were trying to they saw the success of Deadpool and they wanted to add more comedy. Also Guardians. And yeah, Guardians as well. Well also think about like this also, let's be honest. This movie doesn't get made and doesn't get this this approval 
if it ain't James Gunn. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. Because Zack Snyder tried to do some shit like this. They were like, oh, hell no. Yeah. But to their credit also, Zack Snyder was trying to do that shit with Superman and Batman and these heartwarming heroes hey, we all know and love. Hey, I just want to point this out. Wait, Kim, uh, these, we, these motherfuckers, we don't know them like that. We don't yeah. care. They're villains. You right. I just want to point this out, though. For all my people who hate Man of Steel for the destruction and all that, and for the character, and same. for the care, and for Superman not caring at the end, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's not the same. No, 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 no. Bro, Superman Louie jumped over a fucking gas truck and let that shit just blow up oh the building. Oh my god, it's different. These are these are these are got, Superman got power. These people got no power. Who who got powers for? Put man. Let me ask you this. It is his first. It was his first. Like, it was his literally his first day being Superman. Okay, my point is this. I'm not saying what I'm saying is though you've been saving lives for how long? He been saving lives since when? They showed him all the time. He's been doing that shit for a while. So you're right. He's your ghost will still be a safe right. lives. Sa- yes, you're right. He saves people's lives. But let me ask you this. When he was saving niggas uh from, from the oil rig at the beginning, or when he was saving niggas from um what was the other part where he was saving So when he was saving niggas from the oil rig, when he was saving niggas from the bus, mm. when he was saving niggas throughout. Was there any point where he was fighting another motherfucker that had the same abilities? No, as I get that, but the point ain't about always succeeding. It's about the point of like trying. If Superman couldn't save everybody, it's okay he couldn't save everybody. But the fact that he didn't save anybody for real, besides Lois Lane, is the problem. Even if you want to do like this, I said you, I told you multiple times. If you want to do it at the end, at the end of the film, instead of giving that Lois moment where Lois all fucking come in the building after after he kills all, he's like no. He can go around and go hear fucking people crying and, and dying and shit and go save and pick up building pieces. And sh- they can show that man doing like small things after the fight's over oh, shit, to show got- he still cares. They got this man hung up on Lois oh, Lane again. Shouldn't it be implied that he did save people? No! We were talking about that implying something. The people don't want you to always imply things. Why don't you just tell me? Like with, we used to talk about with that scene with the whole phobia, rat, rat, mm-hmm. rat phobia, right? It was great to see or to hear why he has a rat phobia. Not just imply, oh, okay, I bet he got the rat phobia for this. Just you could show that little clip and that changes everything. One scene or one one uh, a moment of dialogue can change a whole film. Look, my nigga, I'm gonna say. Yeah, but that comes out. Nobody's complaining about him not helping people if okay. they show that scene. Well, either way, just I saying. I believe that it was fine for me. I personally think that people kind of no. You might Captain America doesn't imply in his films overreacted. What you talking about? In the Captain America films, they only B- over bitch, bitch what? Captain America be saving no, people. No, 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 hold up. In Captain America Winter Soldier, when all the, when that fucking ship came down, did it show Captain America saving niggas at the end? Hold on, which one? So what? I'm, t- I'm talking one? about Winter Soldier. Uh huh. When that ship came down, them fucking ships came down on on DC. Did it show Captain America saving niggas at the end? That's different. How's how the fuck is it? Because different? he can't fly, fool. Bitch. Please. 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 No, no, okay. Don't give See, me that no, no, shit. No, no. My point was this. No. Captain America, they show him trying to do the, they show him trying to save lives and help people. Even at the worst moment, he tries to save people. And a perfect example I'll give you after I'm gonna get further going to your point oh what you said. God. You can't Captain America can't do everything that Superman can do. That's what makes Captain America so great. Captain America still uh. is human. Even though he has super like strength, he still is human. So he can't do everything that the fucking other heroes can do, like Superman. Superman has no weakness for him besides Kryptonite. So he can do everything else. So that's why you have to show him in a different light than Captain America. But a perfect example is Captain America in Civil War after the building is blown up because of Wanda. What, what, what's the first thing he doing? Sam. Call back, get uh, get uh, the police, get uh, help, get to those buildings, try to evacuate those people. He's already thinking about trying to save lives. Okay, let me ask you this: Before, during Civil War, how many years has he been Captain America, and also how many years has he been teamed up with? I don't hear that because even before he was Captain America, he was still doing that shit. When he was a fucking training as a fucking, when he was still scrying and shit, and he jumped on that fucking bomb, that was still him trying to save people. Oh he always showed moments of trying to save lives. I'm not saying Superman didn't save lives, but what I'm saying is it's two different things when you're okay, saving lives. Here. Let me ask you this. If Captain America was fighting a motherfucker equal as him while he was trying to save lives, do you think Captain America would succeed? No. It's not about succeeding. You're not getting my point. It's about trying. It shows the hero in you trying Nigga, to you save can't, lives. If, okay, uh, you know what? There was a scene in Man of Steel that went, completely went over everybody's head, apparently. You remember when he's uh, talking to uh, that one badass chick? She she. Okay, go, yeah, go, go, go. Feyor, Feyor, yeah. And she's like, 
For every human you save, we will kill a million more. Okay. So if Superman's girl stops and saves one nigga, how many niggas is this all going to okay, kill? Okay, if that's the case, then you could show you them. You got it. And you okay. Got, hey, it's like it's like uh, what Denzel watched <laughs> said in the Equalizer. You got to you got to go for the head. You got to you got to go for the uh, the snake's head. That's what okay, you got to do. Is my point. You got to kill. That's so, fine. Oh, that's nigga. fine. Then after the movie's over, before you show, it still shall be Lois Lane running in and hugging Superman. Once well, again. shouldn't you shouldn't you notice by the way? Metropolis looked at the end of the fucking movie that oh okay it's all repaired now no show me him re- how I know he repaired how I know they just fucking uh, fucking construction workers why do you show me this, show me this man trying to fix shit <sighs> I, th- I I just thought it was implied Javante I thought everybody not everything needs to be implied implied, implied okay. ain't always good for somebody you gotta show some shit mm-hmm. especially with Superman his first film you should show me before you just imply at the film two or three then you can start implying cause I know what's up but for your first Superman film I gotta see that shit. But as a point going, that's it, guys, from here. Sorry, we got a little rant. Uh, this is a J&J hey, review. Man, I'm not even done yet, motherfucker. What you got to say? No, I was also going to be, I mean, we still on Suicide Squad. I mean, we pretty much wrapped up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey. I just, looking into the future of Suicide Squad, I just wanted to ask you, I'll, I'll voice my opinion. Who would you like to see on the net Suicide Squad if they made I'll one? I'll do again no more Suicide Squad movies. If they made one. Oh, man, I really don't want no more Suicide Squad. Uh, they gotta give me one. Who would you want on the team? Like, who are some people like you? I know I'm getting. Want? I know I'm getting Harley Quinn. I know that's coming. Okay. I'm. 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 I think we get that Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, girl, female movie. I think we get that's coming. Okay. Instead, but oh, I don't know about Birds Bird of Prey did best. So I don't know. They might not do that though. That might be scrapped. Uh, I guess I choose somebody. I choose um. Uh, I like them to bring uh. Hmm. Shit, bring a uh, King Shark back. In there. Okay. For me, I want to see Killer Frost. Oh, you talking from new characters? Yeah, new characters. Nigga, what oh, you did not I ain't said from this team movie to the next oh, team. Nigga, that's all. That's the fucking obvious answer, nigga. <laughs> no, they ain't coming all back to this. Well, team. Okay, but come on, that's like a. Oh, okay, okay, series. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, then go. My bad. Okay, for me, Killer Frost. Um, apparently, Deathstroke was actually written in the initial. Yeah, characters. yeah, I heard so, that. I would actually love to see Deathstroke. I mean, I personally. I don't feel like Deathstroke really needs to be in the uh, Suicide Squad. I also don't see Deathstroke being caught in, in like, you know, he's one of those yeah. niggas like, how the hell did he end up in, in fucking Bell Rev? Facts. That, that nigga would be more likely to be in Arkham. Yeah. Um. So, no, I don't see Deathstroke. I wouldn't like to see him. Although, the fact that we probably won't see Joe Manganiello's Deathstroke in the Batman movies or anything like that. If Suicide Squad is the movie where he has to be in, fuck it. I, I'm, I'm here for it because I just want to see Deathstroke on screen. Um, Deathshot would be kind of dope. Bloodsport, although that, having those three characters would be interesting. Give me, give me Penguin. Penguin? Okay. Give me Penguin. You didn't see no... Bro, we ain't seen a Penguin since the 90s. Okay, alright, alright, alright. I'd be cool seeing cool see a Penguin. Okay, I mean, right. you see that motherfucker in a minute. I know... Hey, we're Colin Farrell. There you go. He ain't gonna be in the movie that much, bro. I know he ain't gonna be in the movie okay. that much. Look, yeah. you got no penguin. Colin Farrell ain't penguin. Yeah, he is. Is he? I thought Colin Farrell was um. Nigga, what? No, you're right. You're right. You're right. I thought Colin Farrell was somebody else. Oh. No, I'm tripping. I thought Colin Farrell was the other guy. Yeah, just, you you need to go. Just, just you, you, you're right. You're tired. No, he is go penguin. Some, go get some. Sleep. We'll see what his penguins like. Okay. Oh no, no, I don't want that penguin. That that, that Batman's not in the part of this. Uh, I don't know anymore. This universe. Know. Anyway, yeah, I'll take um, penguin though. Killer Frost, Bronze Tiger would be also be another one. Shit, if they want to put a wacky one on, fuck it, Condiment King. Oh <laughs> or Kite Man. Fuck it. Put, put Weasel it also. Bring Weasel by damn back. Yeah, Weasel could be another one. Bring Weasel back. I try to find a Halloween costume of that shit. I can't find one. Hopefully, they'll make one soon. Huh. I want that for Halloween. I'll wear that bitch a Halloween costume. Really? Weasel? That little fool's fire, bro. Okay. Shout out okay. to, to Sean Gunn, bro. Okay. But yeah, Killer Frost is my definite lock. Like, I want to see her. Yeah, I'll, I'll see P- I want to see Pete. Um, but yeah, yeah. anyway. That's our review for James Gunn's uh, The Suicide Squad. Be sure to check it out on HBO Max uh, or in theaters if you haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, let us know down below your thoughts on the movie and if you liked it. And also let us know who who you would <laughs> – let us know what you would want for your uh, Suicide Squad lineup for the Nets movie if there's a Nets movie. Exactly. So, yeah, this is a Dre and J review. All right, you guys. That will be all. Deuces. Take care, guys.